everyone. Welcome to Popcast on the Rocks for this millennial brunch edition on a Sunday. <laughs> That's what we do. Um, so, yeah, I'm ready to go. How about you? How you doing? Definitely. I'm good. I'm good. Definitely awake and, you know, up and at them and ready to start my day with some good brunching. I already nice. had a, a lovely breakfast this morning. So, yeah, I'm good. Cool. How are you? Good. Yeah. Dropping cheese uh, <laughs> for my Bloody Mary skewer. Uh, well, that's good. Um, but otherwise, otherwise good. So yeah, those are, those are risky ventures there. You gotta, you gotta get the ratio of everything just right. And then, yeah, you gotta figure out how to eat those. Yeah. Yep. One of the best parts so of brunch, the, though. Yes. Yes. Well, I don't have, it's not too fancy. I don't have like a donut or anything on here. So <laughs> Didn't we talk about this but, though? The I feel like we did a couple of times before when we talked about sweet versus savory, you know, accompaniments for bloodies. I'm mm -hmm. always on the side of savory. So yep. Mm -hmm. Though the cheese I'm using on my skewer here is a sweeter cheese. Oh, what are you using? It's like a Norwegian, uh, Norwegian cheese. Uh, it's called Ski Queen. Ski it's Queen. The, yeah. It's the oh, name yeah. of the, the the brand anyways. And it's like a kind of a sweet brown cheese that people would use or I don't know. You could yeah. put it on toast with honey or something or um, okay. I forgot okay. what other options, but yeah, sure. if you want a sweeter cheese desserts, it's really good. So sounds, yeah, sounds good. That's my balance. Um <laughs> so I'm not adhering to any of the drink days. No, nope, uh, me neither. So you got some more drink days. Um those are interesting. National Lemon Juice Day. Right? Yeah. I, I put a little comment WTF by it because, like, why? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even, like, lemonade. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. it's just, like, lemon juice. So I don't know what I'm supposed to do with that. So. Um. Yeah. I mean, make another drink, I guess. Yeah. Lemon I guess. Juice. Something with lemon juice in it. I can't even think of mm -hmm. something off the top of my head, but. Oh, I guess it makes me a poor bartender. I should have, uh, <laughs> you know, I should have a, an answer, a drink for every, uh, you know, ingredient that's out there. But I guess well, your, those days um, are far behind me, so. <laughs> wouldn't you put a little lemon juice in your whiskey sour? Yeah. I mean, depending on how Maybe. you make it. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I was just making it at the bar for somebody, probably just put like, you know, the sweet and sour mix in it. But mm -hmm. if I was like trying to do a good job, then yeah. <laughs> well, don't you want to do a good job for your patrons? <laughs> I want to do the job my boss tells me to do, which okay, <laughs> is okay. usually just like make it quick and and get it out there. So yeah, I mean, I put lemon juice in basically every, almost every whiskey cocktail I would make. Sure. Um, or you know, some sort of citrus, mm -hmm. um, but probably lemon. Otherwise, orange for like a old fashioned. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I usually like putting a little lemon juice or lime juice, kind of depending on how I feel, in like a big ginger. Mm -hmm. Just adds it a little something. So. Yeah. Well, anything um, crazy going on this weekend? Um, have you got some video games in played? Played. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, Chris is uh, Chris is gone. Um, so I've, I've had the, uh, the past few days all to myself. Um, and yeah, just kind of getting stuff done around the house. Cause I'm, you know, just by myself. Um, I prepped for my fantasy football draft last night. Okay. So that actually went really quick, which was nice. Cause I feel like sometimes drafts, you know, like if everybody takes like the full amount of time that they're allotted on their draft clock, like drafts can just like drag on forever. Um, sure. But this one people, I felt like people knew what they wanted and there was only a couple times that people paused. So that was nice. Um, okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that got done. And then I've been playing a little borderlands and then I've been bumming around the uh, game pass. Um, mm -hmm. Since you gave me that code and uh, just trying to figure out what I want to play. And I'm, kind of feeling like neon abyss so i'm feeling like okay i feel like i really i want to get back to when i when i was a kid i loved like platform games 
-hmm. And I kind of want to get back to that. I'm kind of feeling like nostalgic, especially after watching like some of the games that were featured on Gamescom. I'm just feeling like that, that nostalgia. So, yeah. I mean, you can definitely, uh, we'll get to get to all that in a bit. Uh, Gamescom stuff is going right now. I'm going to keep an eye on it for y'all as it goes in case there's something really big that happens. Breaking news. Um, yeah, exactly. We'll need, we'll need a um, new title card. <laughs> we do. We, I, and we still need that little jingle. I, That's I mean, right. I, I'm slacking here. I got to come up with some stuff. <laughs> um, but yeah, well, you're going to have lots of options, I would say, uh, mm-hmm. if you're looking for that kind of, that kind of game mm-hmm. right now. Um, I should actually pull up the Game Pass library so I can like poke mm-hmm. through that as we go. Um, um, okay. Well, we should like get the sad news over with, huh? Yeah. That is, I mean, okay. Shocking. So, yeah, Black Panther, Chadwick Boseman has died, and. Mm-hmm. That's really a bummer. Uh, I had no idea no. that he was going through battling cancer, mm-hmm. and he was only forty-three. Mm-hmm. And yeah, took me by surprise. It's just yeah, what do you you know what do you do? Yeah, yeah. It's it's one of those things that you think must be some sort of joke at first, you know, mm. like somebody yeah, passes on those things go around. Yeah, somebody yeah. passes on the news and you're like, what? No, like, mm-hmm. h- how? What? Because um, he is, you know, so young and, you know, you never heard about him being sick ever. You know what I mean? Like, right. th- like nobody in his kind of, you know, inner circle or personal life ever leaked this information or, you know, you never saw him like disappear from the spotlight for months to go get treatment or anything. So, you know, y- you just... Yep. Yeah, it just like takes you totally out of the blue and by surprise, and that's definitely how it took me. Um, yeah, yeah, just really sad, really tragic that that this happened, and I think a big loss, obviously, for those around him, for the entertainment industry, and of course for Disney and Marvel. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean. Um... He, you know, the Black Panther movie wasn't my favorite of the Marvel line, but I always mm-hmm. thought he did such a great job as Black Panther. Yeah, like when agreed. he was first introduced, I think it was in uh, Civil War. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I really liked his, his role in there, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, he he definitely did well with the role. So yeah, he's got a great really presence. To see him. Yeah. yeah, he had a great. Yeah. Time. <laughs> when other other you know heroes are. Or have been optionally leaving actors have been dropping out, you know, and mm-hmm. then you kind of see the next phase of people coming in and stuff. You could just imagine he'd, he would have had a much bigger role going forward, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I think, um, I think that's going to be tough on a lot of levels because I know, of course, I mean, I don't think it's any big secret um, that they were planning on a Black Panther too. Um, yep. And I think that's going to be tough both moving forward with that um, as a concept and then also talking about recasting. I think that's Mm -hmm. going to be really tough. I think, unfortunately, for them, um, Chadwick Boseman was, like I said, such a presence as Black Panther that that it's going to be really tough for whoever steps in to fill those shoes. Yeah. I mean, it won't be like, you know, uh, with Hulk – who was, mm-hmm. you know, Norton was only in one film. Right. And then, um, you know, they recast Rhodey also again. Well, was that technically After two one. films? No, nope, it was one? one. Okay. Yep, it was just the original. So this you've got, you know, I don't know what it was, uh, the Civil War mm-hmm. and um, then a couple Avengers movies and then his own. You right. Know, so. Well, and... Yeah. Not to get, like, too far into the weeds on actors, but, I mean, Norton wasn't ever connected to the Marvel Universe. You know what I mean? Like, he only had the standalone Hulk, like, like, to your point. Right. You know, it wasn't multiple movies. And I think 
for Rhodey, again, only one movie, but then also, I mean, he's the sidekick. So it's just a, a little bit yep. easier. It's just like a titch easier right. to replace the side guy rather than your main guy. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, double double hurting, I think, in, in that arena for Disney. Yep. So, yes, very, very sad news. Um, there were several TV channels I noticed last night um, that were running um, – marathons of Chadwick Boseman movies, which I thought mm. was pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Like they had other programming like officially listed. And then every time I would like flip around, it would be like a different Chadwick Boseman movie. So they clearly just like switched it up to kind of, you know, honor him in some sense. Yep. So thought that was cool. Well, s- sympathies to the family and yeah, that's um, yeah, too bad. So. Yeah. Well, in, other news that is uh, happier and <laughs> far less serious. Mm-hmm. Um, I watched the Sonic movie last night. You did. Spur of the moment, just like, hey, that's, you know, we were looking for something to watch and that had been a while. So I don't know if you want me to wait to give my thoughts. If you're going to watch that sometime, we can talk yeah. about it. Otherwise, you know, yeah. so. um, give us give us like a general impression and then we'll we'll talk deeper thoughts because I'll try to watch that this week, maybe, and we can talk about it next time. OK. Um, uh, hmm, how do I, <laughs> I want to like I um, I'll just say because I mean, I think a big part of films or anything like that is is proper expectations, you know, mm-hmm. going in. And so it's tough for me to say stuff without like you know it's like that that saying you know you can't actually observe nature without interfering with it or whatever you know um so uh but it exceeded my expectations oh okay it's it's a really uh, it works it's a good all ages film for sure like Uh it succeeds on that level Uh and I just, yeah, I don't want to change your, I don't want to change your, um, your mind or you go into it with certain things, you know, so okay. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna leave it there. Okay. But. Well, I mean, I, you gave like an overall positive vibe, so I feel like that's good at least. Yeah. I, I would recommend anyone, when anyone listening that has not seen it to watch it. Okay. So. All right. Um, New Mutants. It's a movie. It's a new movie. Yeah. It's out. Um, yes, it is. I was really hoping it would be available streaming and stuff or whatever or for purchase and stuff. It's not. It's nope. one of the movies I've been looking forward to a lot. Um, so I would like to see it. Did Despite. You, did you see the link I, I posted? Yeah, I didn't look at. I think I'd seen that around. I, I yeah, I um, I haven't read any reviews. Mm-hmm. I've seen the headlines and the, it seems to be a widespread either not good or meh you know yeah. like meh whatever yeah. so yeah I, unfortunately know. uh for the game of thrones stark girls um you know these these x-men projects that they've both gotten involved in post uh got just haven't seemed to do very well and people have sort no. of agreed that they're among the worst of the x-men franchise if not the worst um and that's really a bummer i don't think it really has anything to do with with these two actresses in particular but yeah unfortunately um who's ever you know kind of the creative direction or mastermind behind the recent x-men movies has not been living up to their potential so quite well, disappointing. i'm sure that what's it sophie turner right uh, uh and the other x-men is jean gray yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, she. I'm sure she still came out with a good chunk of change from those films because she was in. At oh least yeah. A so yeah. I mean, I'm sure she they can't both be too, did. Too bummed about that. Yeah. Well, yeah, and then Maisie for this one, I don't know because it's had so many weird delays and stuff, you mm-hmm. know, and it's just one film, and if it's no good, they're probably not getting another one, and. Yeah. I don't know. Well, and even and even if it was good, you know, like being in the the right there on the gap or the transitional period between right. Disney ownership and not uh, wasn't looking good. So, 
but I still want to see it. Maybe they're yeah. all wrong. That's what I'm going. <laughs> like, yeah, I, I uh, definitely still do want to see it, but yeah, a, initial reviews were rather disheartening. I, I, I'll leave it at that, I guess. Yep. Um, then we've got like a lot of gaming things. So yeah. that's to be as expected. Gamescom is going on, mm -hmm. has been going on. Mm -hmm. um, normally a big uh, event in Europe. I think the biggest gaming event in the world mm -hmm. um, normally. Um, stuff's being online this year. Mm -hmm. And we haven't gotten a lot of big news. No. Oh, wait. I'm skipping over something. I wanted to talk about this first quickly. Oh, okay. Gamescom. Is still, the, still gaming related, though. Still gaming related, yes. <laughs> the PlayStation 5, th thus far, they've started talking about pre-orders. Mm -hmm. And pre-orders aren't live, but they have a site where you can sign up to be invited to pre-order. And Why? They're, like their lines for um, like who they're how they're selecting is our bag, of course. But uh -huh. it's stuff like you know we're looking for the biggest fans or something or another. So I don't know. That's weird. You know, some people were thinking, well, that just means like we're gonna look at your PlayStation account and see how much money yeah. you've spent on average and take the big ones. Yeah. <laughs> Give them pre-orders first. Yeah. Um so Yeah, that yeah, that seems weird and I don't like that at all. It seems like an unnecessary step to like be invited to pre-order and yeah, how would that selection process go? Pre-order your pre-order. Yeah. <laughs> as as Alan just said. Yeah. So I'm the non um the less um cynical view of this is there's been talks for quite a while that there is a fair chance that consoles, the new consoles are going to be in short supply this mm -hmm. year. Even if there is sort of normal production levels, the demand is potentially higher um, right now. Mm -hmm. And it seems like supply levels might be a little low. Okay. So we're, what we're going to get is going to get a lot of people that are going into stores and going online and they're buying as many consoles as they can. Mm -hmm. and then reselling them for twice or three times the cost. Sure. So if you sign up via your gamer tag or your PlayStation ID in this case or whatever, um, and you can, you're can you limited to one console, mm -hmm. that's it. Like okay. you can't you go around that. You know, you could start making other gamer tags, other PlayStation IDs, but you're, they'll see that you yeah. just made that and you're not going to get an invite. Sure. So, although, um, although that would be sad for somebody who genuinely did just sign up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But yeah. Yeah. But I, I mean, also get like, yeah, trying not to. I have to assume that they're going to still be shipping out an inventory to retailers, you know, um, mm -hmm. all over the place. And so you'll be able to pre order through them and buy one there and stuff. I'm guessing that will be that way as well. But mm -hmm. maybe the stock is really short, you know, mm -hmm. or maybe they're just maybe they're reading, you know, people are reading this wrong and they're literally just doing this to kind of, you know, they'll start doing pre-orders in waves, you know, and yeah. make sure they have enough and see how, you know, if they can handle the demand and, you know, I don't know, ease into it. Mm -hmm. So, so there's no date yet on like when you're actually going to be able to pre-order, when those invites are going out or how much the system will cost. Yeah. Okay. So hmm. just that you only get to sense. buy one system and then you can buy like two controllers, two chargers, two remotes, like two of the accessories. So interesting. You know. mm -hmm. I'm personally just happy that we have some news of pre orders. I mean, it's like <laughs> it is getting a little ridiculous. I saw someone on Twitter, I think, say, okay, can we, can Microsoft and Sony just play rock, paper, scissors, and the loser has to announce price. <laughs> and release date, you know, right? Because um, it's getting it, it's starting to look a little uh, sad for both of them, frankly. Yeah. You know, if they were if they were confident in their product and excited about the what they were able to offer the price as, 
uh, we would have it, but they're just both worried about the other undercutting them. Yeah. I mean, and everybody seems to know that there's going to be a lower powered Xbox and it's still, that still hasn't been officially confirmed. You know, we're only a couple months away. It's, right. it's getting silly. Right. So. But. Well, all right. That's the, uh, maybe it's the tip of the iceberg and now, you know, everything's just going to avalanche forward. Maybe. It but. would be nice if we had something at Gamescom here for that. I would think people are waiting. Like, yeah. is there going to be a big bomb show? Are we going to get a surprise price yeah. or date or something? That'd be nice because I feel like there hasn't really been, I mean, there's been interesting news from Gamescom, but nothing totally, you know, earth shattering yet. So right. that would be huge, yep. especially to close it out with. Yep. Well, then we can get into it. Uh, Gamescom is, yeah, it's largely seemed pretty much like um, indie, uh, like an indie showcase uh, yeah. so far. Um, we had like day one and extended gameplay. Um, um, demo for Ratchet and Clank Rift mm -hmm. Apart. Yep. Um, so that was probably the biggest thing thus far. Mm -hmm. um, I would say definitely the biggest thing. And it was, they kind of did the gameplay we saw at the PlayStation event before or PS5 reveal event. Um, yeah. But then, like, kind of talked through it more and um, really just played that section. Um, so I thought that was cool. It yeah. Performed well. Looked. It looked nice. Yeah. Yeah, that was uh, especially enjoyable when we compare it to the uh, the following tease release. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Dragon well, Age. And, that, that, and then we know now that the Ratchet and Clank is supposed to be in the launch window of the PS5. Yeah. So we don't know all this stuff again, but it, that means like PlayStation for their own exclusive stuff is going to have a new shorter Spider-Man game mm -hmm. and this Ratchet and Clank game mm -hmm. and uh, Kuno and um, well, there was something else, but at least those for like console exclusive titles right mm -hmm. in the launch area. So that's, that's pretty strong, I think. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, Dragon Age. <laughs> Ashley got freaked out because she loves Dragon Age. And even with this, but to me, this really just said, wow, they are so far out on yeah. this game. Yeah. Um, yeah, it almost didn't feel worth the mention. I mean, you know, half of their, their trailer was just concept art. And I mean, don't get me wrong, like that's, it looked really cool. Um, but I mean, it, it's not translated into any sort of like actual game footage. So, yeah, I mean, like, I, well, I know that they can't even sort of, like, announce any sort of planned release, because when would that be? Is it, like, 2021, 2022? Like, there's just so far to go, it seems. Well, and this is why, particularly fans of um, Bioware have been so upset like mm -hmm. vocally very angry <laughs> because um that company really made its reputation in recent years on mass effect and dragon age yeah and those are the two franchises they have seemed to have just not cared about at all anymore mm -hmm. um the last dragon age came out in 2014 Oof. um that's a while so that's been six years and this game looks like it's going to be another at least two years out. Right. At yeah, least two years. Uh, yeah, let's shoot for, you know, a decade between games at this point. Mm -hmm. Why not? Just round it you up. Know, I think, it even decade. I think, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it could be. I mean, there could be delays on there and stuff. Yeah. It's, um, it's just, I think that there's no problem with, you know, if they want to have three Dragon Age games and be done, that's fine. But you should communicate that to your fans. Right, don't like, string it along. Yeah, you know, like, Dragon Age, you say Dragon Age isn't dead, but we're not, like, actively working on it. You know, we've done it, we've told our trilogy, and, you know, we it could come back someday, but we're moving on to other projects. Right. You know, 
Um, no one's asking if there's going to be another, um, um, God, what's that game franchise that they, uh, well, the makers of Horizon Zero Dawn, Guerrilla Games, they were mm -hmm. famous for a, a series of shooters beforehand. I can't think of the franchise. No one's mm -hmm. asking, is there going to be another one? Because yeah. it's clear that the studio has moved on to right. another IP, a new thing. They're doing something else now. Right. Um, so you can do that. Like, I don't have a problem, but this whole... Communicate it clearly. Yeah. And I think it makes people more upset that the thing they switched to, the thing that they did de devote their time and energy to, was uh, Anthem, you know, mm -hmm. like an online multiplayer game that flopped upon release. Mm -hmm. And uh, so... You know, it's like, well, if you're going to replace it, at least it replace it with something that we'd like, something fun and exciting or whatever, you know? Right. But, yeah. So anyways, they know people, fans know that it's coming. They've heard mumblings about it. They've talked about it some. So every time they're waiting for some, some kind of information on it, because they're so silent right. about it. And so they're trying to appease the fans here and give them something. But ultimately, like I say, it shows just how how little they've done with the game so far. Yeah, yeah, it was a combination update slash disappointment. I mean, like, obviously they care about it, they were talking about it, and it was nice to talk to some of the developers, but, yeah, when, when that's, you know, shadowed and backgrounded by just merely concept art, unfortunately, that's mm -hmm. pretty disappointing. Yep. Like, the video could be summed up as, hey, guys, um... We know some of you are very passionate about about uh, Dragon Age. Very passionate, yes, I'm very, very passionate. And it's like yelling at him from the side, and he's like, but, but look, I've been working with this franchise for so long, and we care so much about it. We've um, we're we're veterans of the series, mm -hmm. and uh, see, we have artists that are drawing things. <laughs> we're thinking about it, guys. Right. Yeah, I promise, you know, we're gonna do whatever. So, pandering. Yeah. But all right, I've I've ranted enough uh, about that, <laughs> I guess. Um, it deserves um, it. Yeah. Uh, there has been some Star Wars news at this mm -hmm. uh, event. We kind of cover all the Star Wars things, huh? Yeah, no kidding. Lots of Star Wars, lots of different variations of Star Wars. Do you want to start with Squadrons, well, though? Well, what what one has you most excited? Um. Well, the one I reacted to the most, not necessarily the one I'm most excited about, was definitely Sims Star Wars. Because okay. that was like, do you remember how hot that was, The Sims? Like back in like <laughs> middle school, I think, like maybe early high school, I can't remember. But oh my God, like The Sims was everywhere. And it was like such a thing. And like, can you find all the cheats? And, you know, I, I just, I remember like The Sims was so huge. And then I really haven't paid attention to it at all. And then suddenly, like, there was this trailer for Sims, Star Wars theme. Like, I don't know. It just brought brought back so many memories. Like, the whole, like, Sims characters talking in, like, that weird, like, gobbledygook language. And <laughs> moving around and doing weird stuff and trying to throw, like, dinner parties. And then everybody, you know, like, the house is on fire or whatever. I don't know. I just, <laughs> like, if anything was ever going to get me back into The Sims and, like, playing that, I think it would be, like, this kind of thing, Star Wars themed. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, like, I thought that was really funny. And it's got, it's got a crazy uh, soon release date, September 8th. So, barely, oh, yeah. barely over a week away, and it's going to be ready yep. to go. I, I n never got into The Sims. Really? I think I installed a demo once or something. Sure. I thought it was boring and then just didn't. That was it. Um, yeah, it's, I know it's, Ashley was really into it. It's not uh, terribly exciting, but somehow very addicting. Did oh, you, yeah. I can, I mean, I'm, yeah, I can see you, I can see it being that. You know, Ashley had fun, like, say, putting people in a pool and then not giving yeah. a long way to get out and... Heck Have yeah. Them all die in the pool. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, basically it was like, uh, how do we trap our Sims and kill them? Like that just yeah. became a thing in like a really creative, weird ways. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it was just like crazy to like build whole neighborhoods and just, you know, have them interact and do all these like crazy weird things. So yeah. I feel like it was yeah. it's a little like um 
you know, you're almost like God playing with people, you know, like, yeah. Oh yeah. Let me build and create you and then have you do weird stuff. No, you don't want to do that too bad. You have to do it. <laughs> no free yeah, will. I mean, it, <laughs> it definitely fits a kind of traditional PC kind of like there's a, some, a few genres that are clearly like PC games. Um, and like I played on my Mac a long time ago, quite a bit, but I never got into like the real time strategy games, um, mm -hmm. you know, Age of Empires and mm -hmm. um, yeah. Command and Conquer. Sure. And then obviously, this is is different, but it's in the same kind of, you know, yeah. Roller Coaster Tycoon and The Sims and like all yeah, that kind of stuff. never did any, yeah, none of that stuff. Yeah. Not any of it. I was never interested. Yeah. So. Yeah, that was uh, that was like very early gaming for me. It was like Sims and Farmville, and mm -hmm. then took a break from that to play like actual console games. But that yeah, was a, that was a lot of like early PC gaming for me. Yeah, well, and that was you know that was really big. It's like I'm I'm happy because PC gaming is having such a kind of revitalization here or whatever because yeah. there was a good chunk of time where that if if not the truth was the the perception mm -hmm. that oh you you play on pc so then this is the kind of game you play you're mm -hmm. playing a tactics game you're playing a, you know a city simulation or building game that's mm -hmm. what you know and then the the cool games are on consoles right and so i'm just i'm just happy that like these things still all exist and we've got much more you know, it's ultimately a pretty good time yes. for gaming. So yeah. Um, Lego Star Wars, huh? Yes. I mean, again, more Lego Star Wars. Yes. Skywalker Saga. They're uh, they're covering a whole bunch of territory here. Like, mm -hmm. like they're they're going all the Star Wars movies territory. Mm -hmm. Um, which of course the Skywalker saga is. I just I'm I'm impressed with this sort of like ambitious storyline here, um, and it says coming 2021, and there was a lot of like very completed looking trailer footage. But I wouldn't be surprised. Um, I know that the the release date of 2021 is already a delay. I wouldn't be surprised if it got delayed again, mm. just just with the sheer amount of content they're trying to cover. But yeah, maybe. Yeah. I feel like a lot of it's going to like it shouldn't be delayed because they've already done so much Star Wars. Like, are you mm -hmm. remaking all of it? You know, potentially, or, you know, is it more just adding stuff? It, it seems redundant. Like if you played through, you know, the Star Wars prequel trilogy and the Star Wars yeah. original trilogy and this and the Star Wars like the new trilogy, you know, you played through all these games like this game has to be the game for the people that didn't play all those. Yeah. You know, otherwise you're treading a lot of familiar ground. Right. I don't know. But yeah, my, my guess is like, it's a, it's a dual problem of, um, or a choice between, I guess, if they did use, you know, some previous footage from Lego star Wars games, then how would you tie that all into one? Cause then you have to like connect everything. Cause it is the entire saga. Um, or, you know, if they're, if they're redoing it, so you're not playing familiar territory, then you do have to create everything. So yeah. I feel like either way you go, that's, you've got problems either in connecting everything together so you can have one continuous through line or you're reinventing, if not, if not the story, like the entire gameplay so that, you know, you're, you're doing all of it. So that's, that's my only, um, potential reason for it being delayed again, but. Yeah, it looks fun. I love I love the Lego versions of games. I just think they're so much fun. Yeah, like, I mean, I've, they've gotten a little tired for me, but they're always uh, it's such a fun thing for like a parent to play with a kid. It's that exactly. you know drop in, drop out kind of gameplay, good sense of humor. Right. That's that's what I always like about them. They're funny. Like you, I just mm -hmm. I think it's so interesting to like go and play like you know like some of the Batman games and then suddenly play Lego Batman. Like it's just so, mm -hmm. it's such a different tone, but it's still fun. So. Yep. Yep. 
Um, and then the last bit is, yeah, Star Wars Squadrons. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess it wasn't too much more than what we've seen before. Like, I mean, right. if you're excited, you're excited about it. The whole thing is playable in VR. Mm-hmm. Um, it looks cool. It's supposed to be a throwback to the old PC um, Star Wars piloting games um, back in the day, TIE Fighter and stuff. Yeah. Um, the big thing for me was they put in a character from Star Wars Rebels from the Star Saw Wars. That. I mean, I, it's it, she's canon and she has been. So Harris and Dula is uh, mm-hmm. in there. Um, mm-hmm. So I would like it if it's kind of a prominent role. I don't know. Or right. if she's just like giving you one mission. But yeah, that's cool to me. Mm-hmm. Clearly looks like a group within the company that is real fans is making this game. So like they didn't get as big a budget as some of the other stuff, but they they care about it in there. Yeah, so it could be could be pretty fun. Yeah, if you're a real Star Wars fan. I shouldn't say that real quote unquote real Star Wars <laughs> fan, whatever. But um, yeah, I don't know if I'm gonna have time to play it. There's so many things, but yep. eventually it'd be nice to try. So um, lots of other stuff. And mm-hmm. I just noticed seeing themes um, sure. like we were talking how so isometric RPGs mm-hmm. um, seem to be a big thing right now. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's because of like Divinity Original Sin 2. It's kind of sort of the the D&D's resurgence, you know, I feel like yeah. some of that's dwindled recently, but we're still getting lots of games now that are are focusing on story driven um choices and mm-hmm. everything um so that seems like it's still a theme here yeah um kind of cool and then cyberpunk yes so i would say are the two Cute. big kind of themes and yeah doing like cyberpunk uh metroidvania games yeah um because they're you know so like I was, that's what i was saying like if you're doing looking at doing a platforming game your choices are Mm-hmm. abundant right now like mm-hmm. ridiculous yeah and on game pass alone i was just checking um dead cells is on there yeah i saw that gato Roboto is on there guacamole 2 hollow night indivisible uh momodora um fun. ori two ori games those are supposed to be sad and emotional but also good um and then yeah you're neon abyss so it's there's lots i mean there's other things too but those are that's a good lineup of games that a person could be pretty happy with yeah i agree Um, so but now we're getting more added to it we've got um what what were some of them here um skull the hero slayer Mm -hmm. um that one's not cyberpunk, but Metrovania ish. Um, Grime. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. Aeon Drive. Um, yeah, that's just a few. I didn't write down all the games because there are so oh, many. Oh, right. Um, yeah. But yeah. Oh, Blade Assault. That one. Definitely. Yeah. So, um, what stood out to you and in, in what we've seen so far at Gamescom? Um, well, I mean, these and stuff. Yeah, I, I honestly thought, um, Aeon Drive looked really fun. Like, I like the, the combo of like cyberpunk platformer. Like it reminded me of like a cyberpunk Mario kind of thing, Mm -hmm. which Mm -hmm. seemed like fun to me just because, I mean, I feel like we're we're kind of both deep into like cyberpunk worlds right now um, and interested in cyberpunk. But then also, like I said, I I can't help but have fondness for things that that bring me back to that sort of like, you know, my first childhood game gaming experiences like Mario, you know, like the classics. Mm -hmm. Um, But it's it's fun to have like new spins on them, which Mm -hmm. I think this is. So, yeah, and drive looks really fun to me. Um, Ghost Runner looked really cool and it sounded really cool, mm-hmm. but I don't actually know what's happening. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like that trailer was very, 
was very like opaque. It was just, well, I mean, it was interesting and I like to see the world, but it didn't really give me a whole lot. Like you there were just was also a gameplay. narration. There were two videos on that one and there was a little gameplay on it. It's like, it's a okay. lot of wall running. I'm, I'm, yeah. So you're like wall running and like sliding across things and then, you know, there'll be yeah. enemies on different buildings that you need to kill. And so it's like yeah. this 3D kind of reminds me, I guess, in a way of Mirror's Edge. I was sure. like a runner and you're delivering things. It's first person. This is kind of like that, but you have a, a sword and you're running through the city and mm -hmm. it, a few like minor puzzles to like navigate your yeah. environment so yeah it just i mean it it was cool to start off with and then it just felt like it got a little repetitive mm -hmm. like i wanted either to like know that there was something else that you were going to be able to do besides the wall running and like this little like sort of like zip lining thing that you could mm -hmm. do um or i wanted to know that that was it mm -hmm. so to me know. it seems like it'd be a perfect you know, twenty dollar game that mm -hmm. is like a five hour experience or something. You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because yeah, unless there's a whole bunch more and stuff really changes, I agree. It probably would get dull or whatever. But if yeah. you had this condensed, tight kind of experience um, over the course of, you know, like I say, three to six hours, then right. I think that would be what this game looks like. It'd be good for. Yeah, for sure. Um, oh yeah, we, we mentioned that the Fall Guys tease yeah. for season two was coming and we didn't talk about what it was. <laughs> um, so I've, I've won another round of Fall Guys, you mm -hmm. know, really, uh, really getting good now. Um, and, um, so it's still fun. This season two, uh, as you marked is a medieval sort of theme. Yes. Can be a wizard skin or uh, there's knight. Knight, yeah, he kind of looks like Shovel Knight. He's blue. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, that was probably intentional. Uh, and then there's going to be some new stages too. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just thought, oh my god, this is going to be rough because it looks like some of you have to jointly as a group push blocks in place mm -hmm. to be able to jump to the next area. Mm -hmm. and you're just gonna get trampled and I mean, <laughs> you get too far behind and you're not gonna have enough people to push the blocks like it's it'll be interesting that'll be yeah interesting. yeah i think it looks like a total total good time like it looks like yep. so much fun and it's again like right up my alley i love this medieval theme so yep. well done well done fall guys nice um oh some of the bigger games i guess um that we haven't talked about yet really is uh, mm -hmm. the dlc stuff for borderlands yeah. and outer worlds yeah so, yeah i'm uh, really excited yeah. about borderlands it looks really fun um also i love the uh the developer who was talking about how he couldn't believe he got this title past execs oh. <laughs> <laughs> psycho creed yeah. and the fantastic foster cluck which, uh, I mean, yeah. <laughs> that's on brand for the franchise, though. So it totally I is. Like, but yeah. yeah. I mean, good for, good for him for, like, you know, getting that out in the title. Because obviously, like, Borderlands doesn't really tell you how, you know, potty mouthed it's going to be. And then it is. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah. Yeah. I, I think it's fun that it's like a combo of uh, Borderlands 2 and 3 content. Because it's yeah. uh, it's a lot of like memory flashback. Um, there's some Borderlands two memories that you have to play through in order to get to um, some of the missions in Borderlands three, and then you're playing in someone's mind as well, okay. um, which I've seen flashes of it's in Borderlands three as I watched Chris go through some. Um, he's had to like enter some memory chambers to rescue someone who's kind of like tortured inside their own yeah. mind. Which was very, to me, um, like the second I saw it was very like Altered Carbon, you know, season one when, you know, um, Takeshi's getting tortured and he has to like go inside his own mm. mind. So yeah, that was that was kind of fun to me to both like get those elements and then, like I said, the combo of Borderlands 2 and 3 content um, I'm really excited about. So yeah, 
should be fun. Well, speaking of Chris, he has his own game now, The Adventures of Chris. I know, I know. I couldn't believe that. That was hilarious. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That was I mean, fun. it might be good, you know. Yeah. Uh, it um yeah, it so it it again sort of reminded me of a lot of like um like 90s elements. Um, first of all, like, you know, of course, part of his superpower is like puffing up like a balloon and becoming inflatable. And it was like, oh my God, it's like Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Like if Violet Beauregard, you know, her, her puffing up into a blueberry was somehow turned into a superpower. So it's turning violet. (laughs) That's, that's the first thing I thought of. And then of course, as they went through, they were like, oh, it's, yeah, it's like based on nineties Saturday morning cartoons and then it almost kind of gave me like a page master vibe, you know, like somebody being like sucked into like a cartoon and having to um, like solve a, a mystery and go through like different levels with other like cartoon friends. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, it looks really fun. Like I'd, I'd give it a play, um, especially if it wasn't like terribly expensive. Yeah. So. Yep. Yeah, I saw some of these things were mentioned to come to game pass but it was interesting i it seemed like i mean as with all indies they're all coming to steam they're all coming to pc Mm -hmm. um and then and then it seemed kind of split i mean most most of them were saying like coming to ps4 and then there were some saying coming to xbox Mm -hmm. but um i just thought that was interesting often you give um you know these games are coming to basically everything you know i thought there'd be more games announced coming to switch and stuff and right uh, i'm i'm guessing they'll eventually get there or whatever but yeah um let's see um paradise lost had a cool cinematic Mm -hmm. but i have no idea what that game is yep um game deck ashley thought was cool another isometric rpg you're like a detective in virtual reality sort of thing is how they set it up and mm-hmm. they said i think this is the game they said warning will make you want to play pen and paper rpgs it's a very <laughs> choice driven kind of thing you know um xo1 looks like a cool game that i might like kind of a thing that i would like sort of a relaxing atmospheric trippy thing where it seems like you're playing as a this little ufo and uh uh, um that that looks like a would be up my alley potentially again another shorter game maybe that's taking you across universe and a ufo right um dj pops in the chat hello we're doing well thanks (laughs) it's talking about games com stuff um lots of indie games i see now they're even um I don't know, it must be running out of content because a day four Gamescom live stream is replaying things now. Yeah, I was just noticing so, that. I'm not sure um, what's going on there. I, I saw an interesting um, thing that's been going around. I forget who first noticed it or whatever, but the talk was, isn't it weird that we're so close to a n- new consoles and we haven't really seen footage captured on an Xbox Series X mm. of anything that isn't mm. old. Yeah. Anything that's now, I think there was something at Gamescom. There's a, a like, and it's a lower demand game. I think it's coming to, you know, everything. It can play on an iPad or whatever, you know. And um, but basically, they've shown first party titles like Ori or um, Gears of War playing on the system. Mm-hmm. But even like Halo Infinite, when they showed that, that was captured from a PC mm-hmm. that was running on PC. So yep. it's just this stark contrast where PlayStation's making a pretty clear example of captured on PlayStation 5. They've done it a couple times mm-hmm. with like graphically impressive things. And we haven't gotten that from Xbox, which is just weird. Yes. You know, I mean, yeah, weird and disappointing. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. Yeah, yeah. That, that's tough. I mean, again, you hate to to crown PS5 the winner before anything really happens, but 
they're doing a better job um, in rolling out basically everything that they've got, like from, you know, their, their kind of console reveal to some of the, the games that they're, they're showing and the exclusive games, I mean, um, and the gameplay that they've shown us. And then, yeah, like you said, they've captured actual footage using the PS5. Mm -hmm. So yeah, what, uh, what's Microsoft doing here? I mean, it's, it's weird because, you know, Microsoft by paper says they have the most powerful console. Mm -hmm. And so well, I suppose we'll get to see that, you know, with the multi-platform games that come to it, like cyberpunk will probably look better when compared side by side to a PS5, you know, mm -hmm. probably, uh, but most people aren't going to compare it side by side. Right. They're going to see that this game runs a bolt or whatever. And I, I just feel like, hey, though it's a little unfair, because I guarantee you, if Sony said all these games or whatever, they're coming to PlayStation now, and they were like really embracing their own version of Game Pass, mm -hmm. that it would be hyped up everywhere. Mm -hmm. And though, you know, I just, it seems like it's a mistake because on xbox's part they're putting all their cards into or all their chips on game pass mm -hmm. it's like but there's not enough xbox users to like trumpet the amazingness of game pass at this point right and you've got the right. media doing it some but there's no shiny object you're mm -hmm. like you're giving me lots of quantity of good things but where's the shiny thing to distract me the, to ooh and ah Mm -hmm. to make you buy the system so then you try game pass and then you're like wow i have more games than i could ever possibly play yep you know for 10 bucks a month yep um so i don't know we'll see again doesn't you know it doesn't really matter but you still see how people like they're still on about you know really matters to them Mm -hmm. who wins and it's still such a team thing the other day i turned on some stream for a short bit of time and, and some i'm sure just troll it says um uh, nintendo's for children xbox is for posers and <laughs> playstation's for real gamers okay, okay. <laughs> all right thanks thanks for your input much appreciated well yeah, thank so. you. I'll I'll make all my life decisions and all my gaming decisions based on that now. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> based, right. based on that deep assessment. Deep yeah, and technical uh -huh. and definitely truthful assessment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um any other games that uh that excited you? Uh not that I can think of off the top of my head. I mean, I know I saw a lot. Um mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, but it's too early. I mean, it's too early to tell on a lot of things because you know a Metroidvania mm -hmm. platformer kind of thing. There are a dime a dozen now, and yeah. some will rise to the top, and other most of the others will just be mediocre. So right. really, it's going to take that you know that launch window. We'll see if there's some real gems that come out of this, mm -hmm. or if it's um, or what. But yeah, then we'll know what to get excited about. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's it's nice to know that there are going to be a lot of options. Um, mm -hmm. and, it's, and it's nice to get kind of snippets of new things, extended trailers of old things that we already know about. Um, but yeah, I just, I kind of wish that there was, like you said, there was something that wowed me at Gamescom. And mm -hmm. so far, uh, the most, the most, you know, amazing thing to me at Gamescom has been this whole, like, cosplay contest that people have been entering into oh that they're showing now the cosplay yeah stuff. i mean seriously like these people are next level dedicated to this and i think that some of the the detail on these people's costumes is like holy cow i didn't know that was possible <laughs> in real life so yeah yep my my show winner is still ratchet and clank i'm excited that yeah. it's coming soon <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I mean, I'm I'm not not excited about it, but I already knew about it, so it wasn't just like, oh my god, mind sure. blown, you know? Yep, yep. Like I really I really enjoyed it. I just yeah, mm -hmm. I just didn't. I wasn't surprised, so I just sort of wanted that like element of totally new or you know something I'd only seen like 20 seconds of. You know, you get like a half hour 
you know, extended gameplay or something. And I just haven't felt like I got that. So. You know what I'm really disappointed by? Sure. Is What's up? There was a big rumor that, well, it was a big rumor. There was a rumor <laughs> that there was going to be another uh, Nintendo Direct Friday. Yeah. And that did, that, that, that definitely didn't happen. Yeah. Yeah. I remember I that. I remember us talking about that because we were so excited that there was going to be some Nintendo news just to mm. stop this whole like PS5, Xbox, you know, debate mm. here. There's going to be something well, else was, to talk about. But yeah. Then I was thinking, well, OK, that would be during Gamescom. So maybe they wouldn't do that. And maybe they would they would be a part of Gamescom, you know, yeah. maybe. Um, yeah. Well, that didn't that's not happening either. So, yeah, I don't know. Maybe maybe after Gamescom, you know, when they can have the the focus again. Right. Then, have the floor. Uh, yep. Still. Yeah, that's that is a bummer. I agree. Like we've yep. like we've said before, I mean, obviously Nintendo's doing fine. Um but I just yeah, I just want something new to come out of there. You know? Yep. People need us they're gotta be saving their pennies, you know. What are we gonna spend our money on? Right. And, uh, you know, we got to gotta know. Right. Yeah. Convince us uh, what you've got going on and why, sh why we should go there besides just Animal Crossing. Yep. Which, again, is great, but, like, there's only so much you can talk about it. Yep. So. Well, what you got going the, the rest of the week now? You got big plans coming up? Um, not especially. I've got some more softball games tonight, and then I'm picking Chris up at the airport from his weekend of bachelor party fun. So I'm sure I'll hear all about that. Yeah. Have you heard anything about it yet? Um, I've gotten like two pictures, but it's like, they were both during the daytime when they were like out hiking. So nothing, oh. nothing crazy, nothing like I, I know how they partied or anything. So if they okay. didn't get a flight for Grody Jody to come out there, <laughs> I'm gonna be. Oh I'm gonna be God. disappointed. I know. I know. I mean, we did actually talk about that. How to like slip her in a suitcase and bring her out there. <laughs> <laughs> Just oh. be in the the plane bathroom, yeah. snorting crack. <laughs> oh um, God. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, so I don't really know a whole lot yet, other than you know, because they're they're out in California right now. So they did some like hiking and stuff. And it, um, the place that they're at, Lake Tahoe, is is gorgeous, of course. So I got sure, some yeah. very cool photos and one uh, one quick FaceTime while they were out hiking and kind of like looking over at the sunset on the bay. So that was really fun. Don't you mean one quick duo? Yes, true. Yeah, I forgot. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. It is it is almost like FaceTime now. Like it is really convenient that I can I can do duo. Mm -hmm. We tried it before um Google Hangouts and that was just the worst. Like we could never connect on Google Hangouts. Interesting. Cuz okay. you have to like start the hangout and then like somebody has to join or whatever. Like your phone doesn't always notify you when like a Google Hangout mm. was happening. So it was just like, wh you know, whatever. So like Google Duo is better because it's just like the immediacy of FaceTime. So I just think, what does that mean? Like Duo, you know, when you say oh, that's FaceTime, I mean, besides uh, having like been around a while, people know what it is. Like it kind of makes yeah. sense. FaceTime, yeah. um, Skype, you wouldn't know either, but it's just, again, it's been around so long right. that people know. But so if you're going to do a new service, and you just say, hey, do you have Duo? What is that? What do I do yeah. with Duo? Yeah. Is this a multi, is this a two-player game? <laughs> is this, uh, yeah, I mean, I, uh, do you mean Duo, like we're fighting? Or I mean, you know. Well, it's really so. funny because there's Google Duo, which like is very specifically like, you know, we're talking about like Google's product for, or their answer to FaceTime. But then there's like Duo, which is a security, like a two-step security platform that my work uses. Oh, so that like okay. I and and actually many work, um, like I think my dad's work, like in um, uh, government nonprofit, also uses it as like two-step authentication, so that when you sign mm. in, especially if you're signing in to access like you know private or or um, yep. 
classified information. Like you have to do this like dual security login. So yeah, so it's weird that like Google would name their thing Duo when there is this larger like also Duo platform that's built mm-hmm. just for security. Mm-hmm. So I mean, they should have just fixed Hang. I mean, this is a whole nother topic, but they should have just fixed Hangouts. I agree. Like just it's like, a big thing. Just yeah, like rename Google's... Hangouts or not rename yeah. Hangouts, but like retool it so that it does what yeah. Duo does instead of inventing like a whole new thing. Yep. I mean, like they could have really taken Hangouts and they could have made it like a real Slack competitor if they yeah. want, you know, mm-hmm. um, just kind of broaden that out. And um, I always liked when I had an Android phone before I could, and it used to be where if you want to, you open up the chat message app the regular sms app that they have on there and you could choose to send your message as a text or mm-hmm. as a hangouts thing so mm-hmm. right in the bottom by the send you could choose you know if you so if you were using right. either or right. and you have this contact i thought yeah. that was really nice because if the person then you know was on an iphone you could get them to use hangouts you could send them high quality images and stuff or whatever yeah. that way yeah. and um that was nice but but yeah now it's duo and i think then they had allo for a messaging thing Mm -hmm. and i think that's gone now and hangouts is supposed to be going away but it hasn't gone away yet yeah and they have like hangouts meet yeah or something for business yep i've tried Uh, it it's 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 just their answer to zoom but it's not really Mm -hmm. all that much better than zoom in fact i thought it was worse um or at least the, the quality was worse than zoom um okay. yeah my my supervisor and i tried that um when we were having like our kind of check-ins or whatever he was like oh yeah like you know we we all have google obviously at the university so let's try to do google meet because you know it's already like yeah. built into our email and stuff and then yeah it was just like a total total failure we kept freezing and yeah hmm. so Interesting. yeah i think google really just has to like pare it down and focus on like core mm-hmm. things and and make those better rather than trying to like be like oh like here's our answer to this here's our answer to that like you don't have to be mm-hmm. everywhere just like figure out what your focus is and do it well no 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 that's not google <laughs> google is throw everything at the wall see what sticks and what slides down and then right. you know you just scrap the thing that slides down and <laughs> and the thing that sticks like i don't know you you put it's Leave it's it a shame because they have yogurt <laughs> yep because they have some really you know really great services but it's just like they never put their backbone into some of the other ones that don't um you know aren't succeeding or whatever so right or not their backbone just their back just put their back into it yeah <laughs> Mm-hmm. Okay, well, I hope you do well with softball. I don't Thank have anything, you. any crazy sporting events coming up, I guess. So um, we've got uh, the end of the boys coming up for season yes. one. Yes, that's right. Oh, and um, I looked into, um, not to get too into that on our, our sort of regular podcast, but of course we we do the spoiler cast each week for the boys. And you noticed that little... Uh, easter egg there of the flies buzzing around in uh or a fly uh possibly the same fly buzzing around in uh, episodes four and five and i did watch that little video you sent me about that Mm. because i was interested and there's a possibility that that fly is a character that's see that's what i was thinking it's like it's like something yes it's like his name's like swato i think (laughs) Um, which of course is very fly appropriate. Um, and he can like change shapes and sizes much. They were, they were talking about like a comparison in the comics. They do sort of like a different, um, more zany version of the Avengers. And this guy who can change into a, like a tiny fly is like their version of Ant-Man, except that he can actually change into a fly. Right. Instead Mm -hmm. of just like being the size of an ant. So, yeah. So yeah, they're, I mean, they're talking about maybe that's going to be addressed in season two, and that'll be like a new superhero. I feel like you'd have to put it in there so it's at least like a possibility. Yeah. Like I see that. All, I do that all the time writing for 
D and D or whatever, and it's like, yeah. well, I'm not necessarily intending to use this little tidbit, right? But I want to plant the seed, you yeah. know, like, crack the door make open someone notice. Yeah. yeah. So. Yep. Yeah, that seems like the the intention here was just sort of like leaving the door open for that possibility, and uh, we'll see if we get some of that in season two, which mm -hmm. is. Coming up in just a couple days here. Yeah. So we gotta finish that, then we'll be on uh on to on to the season two and um and then tonight's another episode of um what's that called? Is it the Lovecraft, uh, Lovecraft Country? No, the um I mean, we're watching the documentary thing on the Oh the yeah, 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 yeah. So it'll um, be another episode of that. Yeah. Yeah, I forgot what that was called. Have you been able to watch any more of um, Daredevil? Yeah, I'm almost to the season one finale now. Okay. I got, a, I got a little bit distracted because Lucifer came out, and I really needed to watch that because I was so freaking excited. But yeah, I'm almost to the season one finale. Um, I think I'm... No, actually, I think I'm at the season one finale. I just haven't watched it yet. Okay. So we'll have to do a show about that coming up soon. I am... I, um, yeah. Um, I'm going to be watching some more of it tonight. Okay. I say I'm watching that over again with my parents. Mm -hmm. So I don't remember for sure how far we are. We're not quite to the end, but, um, yeah, we're going to start that up again. Cause two, we two had like kind of a break. We just had a lot of stuff going on. It's been a little bit, sure. but I wanted to see where you're at. So, yeah. But, yeah. It's been good. I really, really like it. Good. It's good. Um, yeah, I'm, I've been like uh, still writing for my D&D &D stuff that because we started, we did, so I did my first session the other week online of, uh, uh, so first time ever being DM. It went How'd well, it I think. Yeah, I think it went well. Good. Um, they didn't do anything I expected. <laughs> basically nothing. Okay. Um, but it was okay because it was, it was a lot of fun and they didn't get very far, like, I thought, well, hopefully I have enough planned out for them to do, but they barely got anywhere. Okay. So I'm sure it'll speed up a little bit as they get more used to playing or whatever, but. Yeah. Well, that's good that you didn't so, like burn through your content though. Right. So mm -hmm. you have like a ways to go. And if they do start accelerating, at least you'll have some like cushion mm -hmm. of all the like, you know, already planned content that if you have to go further, like you have time to do it. My um, the difficulty I'm having right now is deciding, like how hard I want to make it, you mm. know, um, and just I don't want to. Well, I don't want to kill them right away, <laughs> you know. I want to <laughs> have them. You want to toy, toy with them, string yeah. them along. <laughs> I just, I mean, there's things you can obviously you can kind of push people in a direction or. You know, make it seem like they're making a choice when they're not really, you know, right. it's an illusion of choice. Um, right. But I, um, yeah, I just don't know. Like some things I, I want to set them there. And if they mm -hmm. kind of notice, they can do that, take that path. But yeah. that path will probably lead them to death. So do I want to like really make that hint really small? Or do I want to like, nope, there it is. And, you know, if you right. decide to go down that route, then so I don't know. It's just it's fun to think about. Sure. But yeah. So. Well, good. I'm yep. glad it's going well so far. Yeah. Yep. All right. Well, I don't know. This might be like uh, one of our. This is definitely one of our shorter episodes. I mean, mm -hmm. if if Gamescom was uh, supplying like the most blockbuster awesome news, uh, it'd be a little different. But um, I know. We got out what there is, and um, we'll um, have to just let everybody know like it's still going on. Gamescom's still going on for a little mm -hmm. bit. So when you're done here, go ahead and take a look at it. Uh, see if anything new surprises you otherwise um you should make sure you're following us here um mm -hmm. podcasts on the rocks that's podcast underscore on underscore the <laughs> underscore rocks so 
it's underscore between each word, all right? Yep. Um, <laughs> uh, on Twitch. And then um, you can search Popcast on the Rocks on YouTube and subscribe to us there. Mm -hmm. These regular episodes will be in podcast format each week. Um, so use your favorite podcast catcher directory thing. Um, our theme is brought to you by Killing the Flower. And you should take a look at them on um, Spotify and on Instagram. Um, one of those band members is my brother-in-law, and he streams usually three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday in the afternoon. That's Lucas333 on Twitch, and I'm often playing with him, so you can take a look at that. Lucas with a K, correct? Lucas with a K, yep. Mm -hmm. um, it's, I think this week's going to be a little different, but you can go on there and watch past streams and all that stuff, so... Um, otherwise, we're on the social media things as well. Mm -hmm. So Facebook and Twitter. So you can find us there or you can you can let us know what your favorite um, game from Gamescom is. Tell Andrea what she should play. Yes. For a sort of um, side scrolling platformer sort of game. Do you want a game that's more um, like focuses really on the platforming or can it involve combat too or like it can involve combat? Like too. I mean, I was I was sort of just looking for something a little bit different since I like to, you know, like I'm so deep into Borderlands, which is obviously like so combat heavy. Um, I'm, I don't mind like combat popping up, but I didn't want it to be like another like solely focused kind of game mm -hmm. like that, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's too bad that um, Celeste isn't on there on Game Pass mm. anymore. I don't think it is anymore. Um, but that was a game I played pretty far, but it's it's definitely difficult. It's very difficult, but it's um, it's a good pick up and play kind of game, and sure. it's all about the plat platforming. Sure. It's difficult snails platforming. So. Ooh, Alan's got a recommendation for me. The Messenger. Well, yeah, that's on Game Pass as well, I believe. So. All right. That's. Uh, um, yeah, I've heard like that's that's an interesting one. I always thought it looked really cool. But then, like, it never seems to rise to the top of lists, you know? Okay. Um, but, but yeah, that, that looks like a cool one, too. I think it does review better than the one you were looking at. Okay. Um, but Yeah, I was a little seduced by the visuals, I think. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, you gotta yeah. like that, too, you know? Yeah, I think. yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's, it's hard because uh, I always am wary... Um, Ever since I tried, like, I know I, t I talk about this all the time, but ever since I tried to watch K, the anime, where, like, I was mm -hmm. totally seduced by the visuals and then, like, hated the entire storyline because it just wasn't going anywhere and it was confusing and mm -hmm. I just dropped it. So, yeah, it's it's hard because I, I do get a little seduced by visuals, but then, of course, when the storyline doesn't follow through, it's no fun for me. So, yep. Yep. so we'll see. And the, Sh the Shantae games used to be on there, too. I don't think they are anymore. Those maybe they'll come back. Shantae games are are great. Ashley loves those. Those are okay. kind of like casual Metroidvania platformer games. So nice. So yeah. yeah. Well, I've anyways, a, I've what's got that? A, I've got a couple. Obviously, I've I've got some options open to me now on Game Pass. So, um, I mean, there are things too that I marked that aren't um platformer games. Um, like I obviously want to play The Witcher because that's still available mm. on there just because I just feel like it's everywhere. It's so iconic and I'd really love to get into the gameplay, yeah. but, but I want to, I do want to wait on that one when I'm at least farther. Yeah. I do. I want, I want to be a little bit farther into borderlands before I pick up the Witcher. Cause I don't, I don't want to totally abandon borderlands if I get sucked into the Witcher pretty hard. Yeah. It's tough. I mean, it's like, it's which way, you know, Ashley, she will power through whatever. So mm -hmm. she's into it. She's into it. And she's going to basically play that until like, if it gets not good all of a sudden, or she beats yeah. it. Yeah. Um, but me, like, I guess I'm more fickle with it. Mm -hmm. You know, I sort of, I'm playing something and then I get tired of it for a yeah. bit. And I, yeah. and I just, and instead of trying, I'm, you know, 
I feel the pressure from Ashley to like just push through something. Mm -hmm. But I'm always like, I just, you know, you're supposed to like what you're playing here. And if I'm all of a sudden in the mood for a different kind of game, mm -hmm. I jump onto a different kind of game, you know? Yeah. And uh, so Game Pass is great for that. That's for sure. So if yeah. you, you know, get tired of, of uh, shanking things in, uh, <laughs> you know, Borderlands, then you got something else. You got, I mean, it's just like Game Pass, there's so much stuff. Dragon Quest, mm -hmm. uh, Eleven is on there. Mm -hmm. Honored, Enter the Gungeon, it's a bunch of Final Fantasy games. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, really it's, just, that. it's just so much. So, I don't know. Yeah. And some of these games are smaller too, so you can download a couple. Right. Take a look at them. You know, it won't take so long. Right. So. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I definitely like the options. So we'll we'll see what I end up kind of picking up, or if I start something and you know, don't like it and switch to something else. We'll see. Yeah. Yep. All right. Well, thank you everybody for joining us. Thank you, Andrea, for coming out for this brunch edition here <laughs> that's right um everybody stay tuned this week for our uh wrap up of season one of the boys mm -hmm. and um yeah otherwise hit us up in the comments and um let us know what you think and um yeah i'll talk to you later andrea sounds good cheers everyone <laughs>